In this video, we're going to discuss quantum teleportation. According to the no cloning theorem, we can't copy qubit state. So how do we transmit qubits from one point to another without destroying superposition or phase information? So here we'll have two example parties trying to communicate, Alice and Bob. And Alice will have a qubit that she wishes to transfer to Bob. How can she do this? Quantum teleportation enables the transfer of qubits while perfectly preserving qubit state. It allows for transportation over great distances. So think even from the surface of Earth to space. It does not involve destroying something in one point and recreating it in another. Quantum teleportation also does not involve moving forward or reverse in time or traveling faster than the speed of light. So what are the requirements of quantum teleportation? If we have three qubits and two classical bits, we can perfectly transmit a qubit. So for teleportation, we need two qubits that are entangled and each party has one half of this entangled pair. We also need a message qubit that is to be transported. Finally, we need a classical communication line that allows um, transmission between both parties. We need to transmit a couple of bits. As a note, since teleportation requires that classical communication line, it cannot be faster than the speed of light. So let's walk through the process of quantum teleportation. In step one, we need to create the entangled pair of qubits. So here we're going to create same entangle without phase. Whenever we talk about this generation of entanglement, Alice and Bob can create the entangled pair or they can receive it from another party. Once again, to create entanglement, we can use the Hadamard gate and the CNOT gate. Next, once we have this entangled qubit pair, we distribute them to Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob can um, be separated by a great distance, but they just have to have their entangled qubits with them. Now, we'll have Alice with the mystery qubit psi that will act as our message. We'll have a total quantum state, including the message qubit and the two um, entangled qubits as follows. So we'll have the contents of psi, so alpha cat zero, beta cat one, uh, tensor, or one square root of two, cat zero zero plus cat one one for the total quantum state here, once we distribute this tensor product. In the next step for teleportation, Alice will apply C0 to both of her qubits. Her C0 operation will have the message qubit as the control and her qubit that is one half of the entangled pair as the target. This will allow for the following state transformation. We can see that because Alice and Bob share entanglement, um, the whole quantum state has been changed, including the qubit that's in Bob's possession. In the next step, Alice will apply a H gate or a superposition gate to the uh, mystery message qubit psi. That'll cause the following state transformation. So state two, we have um, one over square root of two alpha cat zero 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 plus alpha cat zero one one plus beta cat one zero one plus beta cat one one zero. And that transforms into state three, which is the following. Because we insert the Hadamard operation, which is our superposition operation, our state expands to include a lot more basis states. But we have four for alpha and four for beta with some phase introduced for the case of beta. In step five, Alice will measure her qubits. So we have this state before measurement. And then when she measures, she'll be observing the state of these first two qubits in all of these basis states. So as a note, there are four possible outcomes for Alice's qubits upon measurement. And remember when she measures that information collapses into a classical bit. So the result is classical. Highlighted here, are the states that she could possibly observe. Next, we can come to conclusions about Bob's state by using those measurements. If Alice sees a zero, zero, we narrow down the state of the entire system to include 
those only that include the zero zero state for the first two qubits. So that would be these two here. So with her measurement information, we were able to come to some conclusions about what the state of that final qubit will be. If we have a measurement of zero zero for Alice, the value of Bob's qubit is alpha ket zero plus beta ket one. If Alice measures a one one, the value of Bob's qubit is alpha ket one minus beta ket zero. And we can see that by looking at um, our state and um, the properties of that particular basis state for the state where we have Alice's qubits in state one one. After measurement, Alice transmits her two classical bits to Bob. Bob receives those classical bits and has to correct the state of his qubit in order to recover the original state of psi, which is alpha ket zero plus beta ket one. Remember, if Alice measures these following bit combinations, the value of Bob's qubit will be reflected. So with that in mind, how does Bob correct his qubit? To recover psi, Bob has to do the following. If bit one, which is the first bit that Alice has measured, if, the, if bit one, if the first bit is one, which is the first bit that Alice measures, Bob applies a Z operation. If bit zero is one, which is the second bit Alice measures, then Bob will apply a not gate or an X gate. So we can see that here. Here are our correction gates. If Alice measures a zero, zero, we don't need correction. Bob already has the uh, recovered state for psi, the message qubit. If Alice measures a zero, zero, Bob already has the state of psi in his possession. If Alice measures a zero, one, Bob has to apply a not gate in order to exchange the probability amplitudes associated with ket zero and ket one. If Alice measures a one zero, Bob must apply a Z gate in order to correct the phase associated with ket one in his qubit. If Alice has measured a one one, Bob must apply a not gate or an X gate as well as a Z gate in order to correct the bit flip and the phase flip that occurred in his qubit so that he can recover the state of psi. Here we have the full quantum circuit for teleportation. If we were to divide it in half, we can see that Alice, we can see that Alice has the top part of the circuit while Bob has the bottom half of the circuit. As a note, um, these double lines indicate classical information. That's why we have them after the measurement operation. We have classical information controlling Bob's qubit. Some notes about quantum teleportation. Alice never knows the state of the message qubit psi. She transmits it uh, without knowing it and performs operations on it without knowing it. The only thing she knows is the results of measurement. Communication here is not faster than the speed of light because of that dependence on the classical communication channel. And that's a common misconception about quantum teleportation. During the process of teleportation, Alice and Bob destroy their entangled qubits. So if we want to uh, transmit more qubits, we need to generate more entanglement and distribute it. Finally, uh, quantum teleportation has been experimentally demonstrated many times in the lab. Um, and it's a good example of where quantum computing shows an advantage over classical methods. In fact, in 2017, qubits were teleported from Earth to space. Why is teleportation beneficial? Well, first, the actual transmission itself is faster because we're using classical lines to assist us. This is because moving qubit states over large distances is a little bit slow and error prone. So the fact that we're transmitting classical bits to help us transmit that qubit, uh, that allows us to complete the procedure of qubit transfer much quicker. Second, moving known states is a lot more reliable than unknown states. So this allows us to move qubits that are in the same entangled state so that we can pre-share many qubits in advance for later teleportation procedures. And then whenever you want to transmit that unknown qubit state, you can do so very quickly with the help of that classical communication channel. Next, there's the option to use parallelization during teleportation procedures. What does this mean exactly? This means that we can take that slow qubit that's being transmitted, and at the same time, its pair can do quantum calculations. The resulting delay is then only in the classical line 
uh, that is being used for transmission and the gates that are used to reproduce the teleported qubit at its destination. Some applications of teleportation include reducing computation errors in the form of noise resistant quantum gates and error correcting codes. Teleportation can also be used to unite quantum computers to form networks. Additionally, teleportation can be applied to create ultra secure communications channels. This is because when qubits are transferred, they're transferred with ultimate privacy. Eavesdroppers cannot read the messages.